from ABC Television Center in Hollywood, Shindig! Welcome again to Oklahoma More Music for a Minute than any other show in television. The show that you made the highest rated musical program of the television season. It was just the first weekly network series that ever featured rock and roll in America. Uh, Shindig was way ahead of its time, almost too way ahead of its time, which is one reason we had so much trouble getting it on the air, one reason we had so much trouble keeping it on the air, and ultimately, um, one of the reasons why it went off the air. You know you're making it. They all said the same thing, my God, it's fantastic, but it's just too rough and rocky and rowdy for television. Shindig was a forerunner of MTV. <laughs> special time. It was the time of the British invasion. It was the time that Elvis kind of went undercover. And uh, the Beatles took over. Well, it seems sort of like Beatlemania to me. Jack Good, who was the producer of the show, uh, brought as much English influence as he could to the States. Thank you, thank you. We have got on the show next week, Freddie and the Dreamers. We also have on the show, Manfred Mann. We also had Sandy Shaw, Donna Lauren, Dick and Dee Dee, Bobby Sherman's back, the Blossoms are back, the Wellingtons are back, the Roy Van Dyke is back, the Moore Tops are back, Betty Swan is back, Billy Preston is back, Jack. what Uncle Tom goes, Jack. He knew that the emerging rock style was going to be mop top, British invasion, and he came back to America and to ABC and he brought his vision with him and he said, this is what's going to happen and he, he made it work. One of the greatest things about having a hit at that time was that it was, I got to be part of Beatlemania. Beatlemania. It's at the period in a girl's life when the hormones are going wild. The McCoys were four white kids that looked like the Beatles, who had Beatle haircuts, who could do a previous black hit. My Girl Sloopy, it was called then, was number one by a group called The Vibrations. So it was established as a proven hit song. People always, in those days, felt like it was very uh, risque, I guess, very sexy. I still don't understand exactly what the sexy part is. A lot of rules were broken, and um, the music was so strong, and I think people believed so much in the music. There was a certain commitment, a certain um, rebel feeling. The fact that Shindig was live, there was, there was, uh, live television always has a certain kind of enchantment. Uh, the sound was different because it came and went. You didn't have a chance to remix things. It wasn't, it was, sound wasn't perfect. It was raw and it was like, it wasn't all slicked up. And it was real people playing real instruments. You're fine, so kind. really gave the vision of nighttime rock and roll. It became 
the first time you could get on nighttime and didn't have to follow a bear act or a guy who talked to his hand. Please don't mistake me or try to make me the shadow of anybody else. I ain't for him or who you think I am. I'm just trying hard to be myself. There was a, a big difference in the Turtles in just about every major rock and roll band, and that is proof positive as to the pretty boy rock and roll image. The Turtles had no pretty boys in their band. I'll tell the world. Be, let me be, that's all I ask of you. I am what I am, and that's all I ever can be. We grew up in Los Angeles. We went to high school in Los Angeles, and there was a radio station in Los Angeles, KFWB, and on that station was one of the greatest disc jockeys in the history of all time, was a guy named Jimmy O'Neill. All right. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Howdy hi, Jim Diggers. Come on in. There were two questions that popped up nearly every interview I did, and I traveled the country, and for that matter, the world extensively while Shindy was on the air, and there were two predictable questions during that era. How do you get your hair to do that? It was an emotional experience. You know, I thought I was going to get fan mail from girls who wanted my body, and I got fan mail from guys who wanted my hair secret. Jim, Jim, hooray for him. Jimmy O'Neill has boy appeal. He looks so cute in his mohair suit. He smiles so sweet, and he looks so neat. His hair is so long, and he looks so strong. His voice is so deep. And he is such a creep. Oh, get out of here. You come on, later. show was a springboard for so many, many of the artists that today Aretha Franklin made her debut on Shindig. She was only maybe a year or two older than I was at the time, so she showed up in gospel robes. I mean, <laughs> she was a newcomer. There were not very many white, middle-class rock singers, um, pop singers at that time. So I think that was my first kind of edge. I think it was interesting to take another stand where one could, in fact, be somewhat rebellious as a, as a girl. That was, um, that was coming a long way in the 60s. Jimmy, how do you like this dress? This is my version of the granny dress. Ray Darling, music please. Yeah! 
Okay, I was with a group called the Wellingtons, right? We were the backup singers, the male backup group in the show. And it was just uh, a little, one of little Jack Good's little production things, you know, to do this bit with Zsa Zsa. And she was just real sweet. I mean, it was, you know, it was a choreographed thing, but she, she did her little thing with them. She was supposed to kiss me. The other two guys got to kiss, and she, instead she just threw her boa at me, and I got to fall down. Head was just made everybody go, oh my God, I can't believe this guy. You know, he, he was dynamic, he was great looking, great mover, and a great singer, and he had a great hit called Treat Her Right. If you just treat her right, I'll squeeze a real jam. You gotta make her feel good. Man, Roy could dance, I mean, just the sheer uh, flexibility of his body. Roy could turn a stand and flip. Uh, James, he'd give James Brown a run for his money. James Brown blew me away when I saw James Brown. His movement, I'd never seen anything like it before. kind of looked at each other afterwards and we were all speechless, all the dancers were standing together. And we just all looked at each other like, oh my God, what is this? <laughs> And also the way he was staged, it was so incredible. The way he played with the audience, with the cape and the whole thing of falling to the knees and then coming up and the guy patting him, it was just, it was mind boggling to us. And we all screamed because it was, it was so fantastic, you know. I've never seen anything like that before. that Shindig was probably the beginning of the music video in terms of uh, just concentrating on singing and dancing and not worrying about any storyline or anything else, any plot, just uh, entertainment, pure entertainment via song and dance, and especially dance becoming more important. We did every dance feasible, from the mashed potatoes to the swim to the slop to we even threw in the Lindy. I mean, we just did all, we even made up our own dances, you know. I mean, there was a constant new generation of movement all the time. The basic one was the monkey, you know, and that was this, this one. And then the jerk, which was kind of a halftime feeling of it, the hitchhiker. You know, and it had all this stuff in it. The Watusi, which was every part of your body that could shake or shaking. And then we had different levels. We would dance on, on a platform, and sometimes we'd dance on elevators, and we'd have to run down the ramps and do the pony. Endless, endless time, you know, you just pony yourself to death. And then you'd get up there and you'd go into a pirouette and you'd have to do a turn on a spot, you know. And a couple of times, you know, we'd lose a girl. She'd just fall right off the back ramp there, you know, and you'd say, oh. Temptations, you know, or those groups that that were choreographed were very tight and precise, where we were wild and you know loose and, and throwing ourselves all over the place. Those bands then were all choreographed, and then Barry, when he 
open Motown records, expanded upon that, added a little more dancing to it than just the hand movements. And it became a style. It became the thing that if you had a rock and roll group, all part of the singing was the dancing. To have a high energy show, that means you gotta dance, right? You gotta move, you gotta go, man. Everywhere I go, your face I see, every step I take, you're just like me. Oh, I can't I considered myself much of a dancer until I did the milk commercial for the ADA. Um, that was really kind of the first uh, dancing I had done. Anita was one of the dancers on, on, the, on that commercial, and I believe it was Pam. It was kind of like one day they said, gee, we need to do this milk commercial. Come on, you three, you're going to do it. I literally had 38 glasses of milk that day. And I started to curdle, and I, you know, I didn't feel very good, but <laughs> it got done. As a matter of fact, we had to take the last take because if you look real close, as I'm sliding down that ramp for that last time, I ripped my pants right across the knee. I think the most unique thing for me was actually being part of the beginning. As a young singer-songwriter on the West Coast, there, we weren't really copying anybody. We were inventing it. We were inventing the sounds, inventing the energy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, singing their current hit song, Baby Love, here are the Supremes! country, you had soul, you had pop, you had rock, all these different performers on one show that, you know, nowadays you would never see them in the same show, you know? Well, she was a walking down the street, looking fine as she could be. Hey, hey. You know, being a Sir Douglas Quintet, it was really a mind blower for a lot of people, because they had really thought we were English, you know, and we weren't from Texas. So be it. <laughs> hey, hey. If you have not that conversation, oh, yeah, what I say. Hey, hey. She did not know about. I just don't think there'll ever be another era like that. Probably Shindig helped capture that mood, that feeling.
flash back thinking uh, when we had even in our band Leon Russell and Glenn Campbell and and uh, Billy Preston I mean now in retrospect it's hard to think that they were just like us the core you know and it was just unbelievable to take a break and listen to these guys play it was just it was scary the talent walking on this stage <laughs> Watching my father perform on there was something else. Because he loved to dance, he loved to move it. They called him Mr. Excitement. It's not like it was in those days. That's when, you know, those music really hit you, those words, you know, it was feeling. People put feeling into their music and songwriting. Good night, Cindy, is everywhere. And remember, no matter what anyone says, rock on! Get ready, because here it comes, Shindig Prison. Come on, baby, let's go. Come on, baby, let's go. 